Welcome back again. Upon several viewers' requests, here's a short update on my Paphiopedilum Rungsurianum and Paphiopedilum canii. Because of the drooly and cooler days we have at the moment, I don't have to water my Paphiopedilum as much as when it's hot. But since they're growing in a house environment, I miss them from time to time to keep the humidity a bit higher. And since I had a bit of free time, I decided it would be nice to show you my miniature Paphiopedilum babies again. In my collection are three Paphiopedilum Rungsurianum, the ones at the bottom, and two Paphiopedilum canii, those at the back. When looking at my plants individually, the first one shown actually recovered the best. It was the smallest of the ones I bought, but it gained a lot of strength over the last year, and it's even producing side shoots now. The second one is doing well, but not great. It lost a few leaves, but did produce a new one this summer, and it's recovering too. Not only were they stressed with the heat waves we had last summer, but then in autumn I fell sick and couldn't properly care for my plants for several weeks, and for this species it left its marks. The third one is the one that tried to flower last year. As you can see, the dried up flower bud is still there. But this one too is recovering and producing a new side shoot, so hopefully flowers will come in the future. The Rungsurianum arrived late July last year, when I repotted them instantly in an airy but moisture retaining mix that I created myself. They did well, but really got stressed when last August we had extremely dry and hot weather. My two Paphiopedilum canii arrived last April. These came from China as divisions from well-grown plants. They came bare root and packed in moss, and I just potted them up in my Rungsurianum mix with added some extra pumice and fern root upon instructions of the Chinese grower. These two plants really settled in very quickly and they both have grown new leaves. As you can see, both species look very much the same, although the leaves of Paphiopedilum cani are a bit wider than those of Rungsurianum. The underside of the Rungsurianum is a bit more purplish. The Rungsurianum I have came to Europe from Thailand in flask and are now 5 years old. Both these species are very, very slow growers. They like humidity and moisture, but they don't like it when the roots are staying wet all the time. My room temperature in winter is between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius, however, in summer this can go up over 30 degrees Celsius. They are placed approximately 1 meter 20 or 4 feet away from a northeast window and that's where they get their light from. Also in winter, days are shorter then, but I don't provide them with extra light. However, since they are growing well now, this might change next autumn. To give you an idea of the adult size of these plants, and mine are adult flowering size plants, the inner diameter of the pots they're in is 10 cm or 4 inches, so these really are small plants. I was also asked how the roots are growing. To be honest, I can't tell. They've only been potted up between 3.5 and, and 12 months, so they're not due for a repot and I'm extra careful with these because they are very rare in cultivation outside Asia and I don't want to lose them. These are very expensive plants when you can find them, and I really do have a soft spot for them. After summer, some more Rungsurianum are coming, and possibly also some Kanii from Thailand. As for watering, I water normally three times in two weeks, and when it gets very hot, I water twice a week. The mix I use is quite water retentive, so they get watered just before the bottom media gets completely dry. The water I use normally is rainwater or reverse osmosis water, but I do get water with tap water on several occasions. It doesn't seem to bother or harm them. As for fertilizing, I only use a Kern's rain mix, and while the normal dose is 1 scoop or 2 grams per 2 liters of water, I use 2 scoops for 5 liters of water, so the dose is a bit lower than recommended, and I use it every time I water the plants or mist them. I never flush, because when you water well, the excess salts in the media are flushed out. So every time I water, I thoroughly drench the pots, 
and let the water run through. This way, I'm not only assured that the excess salts are flushed out, also my media is thoroughly wetted. Next to my Paphiopedilum Helene, these really are my favorites. Not because of their rareness, but because I love small and miniature orchids. And these two species really fit the bill. The only hope I have is to see them in flower sometime in the future. If you have any more questions, please drop me a note in the comment section or send me an email. I will gladly share my experience with my orchids. Thanks for watching again and until next time.